great walk this morning. Uh, thought I would share some thoughts uh, and kind of sift it down to three ways that that I manage uh, work time as as somebody who works in technology. Um, so I know a lot of people are still showing up to the live stream, uh, uh, but I want to jump right into it. Um, first off, I, I'm <laughs> I, uh, a couple of days ago, my, my wife was, uh, was talking to me and, and she, she goes, yeah, you know, with all the kids around, I'm having trouble, you know, hearing, uh, you know, I'm having trouble hearing, uh, you know, people on the phone. And I was like, oh, you know, of course, me being the, the fixer, uh, I'm like, man, we, we got to get you a good headset. So, so I bought her uh, some, some of the uh, AirPods, you know, from Costco. Um, and immediately took them. So, so I'm using those as my microphone. I haven't been able to, te- this is my first live stream with, uh, uh, AirPods. So if, uh, uh, if, if it's coming through, l- let me know, let me know if, if uh, I'm too loud, too soft, uh, cause I, I haven't been able to test them outside of just doing a, a little test with my own camera. So, so, uh, nonetheless, uh, I have immediately stolen my, my wife's AirPods. So let me, let me dive right into it. Um, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll respond to some of the comments. I already saw some some shooting in, uh, but I'm going to try and stay focused because you guys know my weakness, right? Um, thank you, uh, uh, Martin. Uh, perfect. Um, so you know my weakness is I see the comments and then I'm like, whoo, I'm off. I'm off on on uh, some distractions. So so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay focused first off on on uh, the topic of the live stream because I know uh, there's there's about 30 people. It's early in the morning. About 30 people here right now. But I know thousands watch this later, so I want to I want to dive right into what what you're here for. So for, so first off, um, three ways that that I've learned to to manage technology work time, um, and let me define what first off where I even came up with this this uh, topic is uh, it, it was actually a Reddit post um, where somebody said I love being a network engineer, and I'm like oh, and so I read it, and, and they, they were just like. They were on, on cloud nine of like, you know, for years I've been trying to do this. I now have a job doing this. And then I saw, then I saw the, 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 you know, train of people that are like, just give it a couple of years. You, you know, don't worry. You'll start hating your life. And I'm like, what? You know, like, you know, here I've, I've been, I've been talking about network engineering for 20 plus years. Uh, and, and, uh, and, and nonetheless, I, I still, I think that, that um, it's still the best career ever if, and, and that's, that's where I was like, okay, if, you manage it well. So, so uh, I, I put them in the, I put my, my thoughts in the YouTube description. So let me, um, let me expound on them right here. Number one, as a, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak to network engineers, but I'm going to just talk about technologists in general, because we all have a common ground. Uh, the first off is to adopt a salary mindset rather than hourly. And I'll, and I'll put, you know, ellipses, dot, 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 uh, because your employer won't do it for you. And it's not your employer's fault. Um, here's what I mean by that. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people that work in technology, um, whoa, my phone's going all over the place. Um, a lot of people that work in technology still approach it with an hourly mindset, meaning they think eight to five job, right? Um, and technology is not an eight to five job. Now, a lot of people will hear that and say, so you're saying I have to work all the time. That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, I, I actually, you'll see as I unfold these three things, exactly the opposite. A salary mindset. Can, so can I define this for you? Because it took me a long time to understand this, even after I started my own company. Uh, uh, and, and I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it's a different way of thinking. An hourly mindset. And this, I'm, I'm going to pull it straight from government regulations. An hourly mindset means you are paying somebody to physically be present at the times that you define, right? Like, so if you're paying somebody hourly uh, in, in, a, in terms of uh, how, how you pay them to work, uh, you are saying, hey, I need somebody to manage the snow cone stand from 9 a.m. when we open until 3 p.m. when we close. Somebody has to physically be standing at that snow cone stand. You do not leave until 3 p.m., you know, you, you like because otherwise the snow cone stand doesn't operate. That's an that's an hourly mindset. Salary mindset: you're paying somebody for the function they perform. Doesn't matter how short 
or how long it takes. You're paying them for the function. When you're paying a technologist, you're paying them to deliver whatever it is that, that they're, they're, you know, a system admin, a network engineer. And here's, here's one of the challenges. And, and this is, this is, you know, I'm going to call it a tip, but I'm like, this is like oxygen for you. The employer oftentimes is not a technology company that you work for. There's people that are into technology and they work for, you know, Staples uh, or Office Max. You know, there's people who, who, you know, who work for, for companies that, I mean, the, a lot of companies out there have nothing to do with technology. So they don't know how to manage you. They oftentimes don't even know how to write a job description. They just found something off of, you know, uh, indeed.com and, and copy and pasted that. So, so the reason I bring this up is most technologists, most network engineers, most system administrators hire on to an organization that doesn't know what they do. And that means it's up to you to define, here's what I'm going to do and scope that in for yourself. Um, Sorry, if, if the audio is, is challenging, I'm still trying these new, these new AirPods. I see a couple of comments about the audio, but, um, but, uh, but it's up to you to say, this first off is the function of my job, you know, and, and, and make sure that you get with your manager and say, hey, I'm, I'm on a salary, which most technologists are, and, and, and it may be, uh, you know, it may be um, different. I, 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 honestly, I've never met anybody who works in technology has paid hourly because that would be a major disadvantage to the company for the most part because technologists tend to work a lot. Um, but first off, define what success looks like. What does it mean to be successful in your job? What does it mean to be successful at what you do? Then you've got you've got the goalpost to aim for. Meaning, okay, my my job here, let's just say network engineer, because that's, that's what I, I live and breathe. My job here is to make sure the network stays up, you know, 99 point, like this is something where you would, you would define, you know, we will know when, when the outage occurs, we will respond within da, 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 da. Um, we will, we will handle that. So, so the, the number one thing to managing your time and your work life is to adopt a salary mindset. Okay. Here's the second piece because a lot of times you need to work after hours. Oftentimes technologists dive into things when people aren't at the office, um, you know, and so, so they'll, they'll you know, show up at 9 p.m. and begin you know, working till 3 a.m. And then everybody's like, what is, you know, how come Harvey's not here? You know, those, you know, that, that person, you know, like, like if, if you haven't defined, man, I'm, I'm getting by a street. Let me, uh, let me back off because it's loud. Um, the, so if you haven't defined the functions that you're performing and, and start to communicate, this is why, why it goes right along with that salary mindset. Hey, you know, we're going to be doing this from 9 p.m. till 3 a.m. Schedule it from, from 6 p.m. till 5 a.m. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying be deceptive, but, but give it a big old window so that when, when you're not there the next morning, people get used to that. Oh, it's the technology guy. He worked all night. That makes sense. You know, it's a salary mindset. Technology often is not an eight to five job. Now, I, I realize there's exceptions. Uh, I've, there's actually uh, a gentleman who, who uh, works with me now, amazing guy who, who used to work at a hospital to where they were a 24 seven operation. Um, and, and that's where it's like, okay, well, obviously you can't be a 24 uh, seven operation yourself and, and know what you're getting into when you're, when you're signing up. You know, how do you, how do you say this is my my line where, okay, that's, that's done. So, but that, that's the first puzzle piece, right? Adopt a salary mindset for yourself. Salary meaning this is the job function I'm performing. If you don't have a clear definition of that job function, then, then you're, you're, you're aiming at the wind. You know, it's, it's like people that say, if you don't set a goal for yourself, any place will get you there. Well, of course it's cliche, right? But, 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 what I'm saying is if you don't define, because the company oftentimes can't do it for you, they don't know what you do. They don't know what success looks like. They're like, Hey, I just know we got to have that guy or that gal there. Because if, if X, Y, Z goes down, I, you know, that takes down our whole company. So let's, let's put somebody there that, that makes sure that doesn't happen. Right. So it's up to you to define that. Okay. Number two, number two, and this is, 
This is one that I, I again, saw happen uh, last night uh, again. Uh, and and <laughs> Eric, if you're listening to me, because I know Eric often tunes into these things, uh, I, I use you as an example, not as, as good or bad things, but just just it's things. It's things that makes me think about, wow, it's good. So so last night um, there was a outage scheduled, uh, a maintenance window scheduled for a whole bunch of our customers where we were converting OSPF uh, area types uh, configuration. If you if you're not familiar with uh, OSPF area types. Um, actually, I have a great little uh, video out there somewhere on it, um, but but nonetheless, um, my, my point number two of how to manage your work time is to break things down to the smallest possible element. And this is where planning, I know, p -p -p planning, because I'm, I'm by nature not a planner. I've learned to be a planner because, um, I, because I have a wife and I have kids and, and they, uh, they will get, tend, to, tend to get a little upset at me when, when I don't show up. Um, so, so what I mean by that is a lot of times we think of like big picture accomplishment. Okay, now I'll, I'll take the example from last night. We need to convert all these OSPF areas to a, a stub area, right? That, that, was, that was what we did last night, from a not so stubby area to a stub area. I know it sounds funny, but those are real technology terms. Um, and there was for a whole bunch of customers. So, so it ended up taking, you know, when, when you think about it in your head, you think about, okay, well, that's like five commands on each router. Okay, you know, go in there, type it in, bada bing, right? So what happened last night? Uh, last night, unbeknownst to us, one of our sites had a, uh, <laughs> what even is a computer, says Chris. Uh, Chris, this might not, might not be the live stream for you. Um, so, but, so last night, one of the sites had an outage, not, not a, not a, not a, um, like an unplanned thing, but the carrier had to do some maintenance. I mean, they're trenching up streets and all that kind of stuff. Ironically, a couple miles from my house is, is so, so we went to convert all these areas, right, to a stub area configuration. Um, and we got to that site and we're like, oh crap, you know, we've, we've got, we've got this, this site that we, you know, that's down. We can't get to it to convert it. But if we, if we like, if we do the rest of our conversion, if we do the rest of our uh, configuration, then, you know, it's, it's kind of an all or nothing thing, you know, to where it's like, we either convert all the sites or we don't, you know, because uh, <laughs> it's technical um, because, because of how OSPF works because of math. Um, so, so we, we were, we were sitting there like, uh, 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 and, and so, you know, as I was talking with, with Eric last night, I was like, all right, well, I said, you know, we, we were kind of like, well, we could try this, we could try this. And I said, at the end of the day, my friend, you got to set your alarm, uh, for, for early in the morning when this maintenance window completes, um, because we, we kind of bit off a big chunk. Now it didn't seem like a big chunk at the time we bit it off. You know, we we're kind of like, Okay, you know, this, we're just going to go through and convert the convert the areas to a stub area, right? It didn't seem like a big chunk, but when you're doing technology, know that small things are big things. And boiling it down to the smallest possible piece, a lot of times, that's I mean that that's the process of project management. It's the process of creating your steps and your plan for for you know how you're going to approach an operation. So. Take the small, like, like start small, schedule a two hour window for something that should take you five minutes. Because you know, when you get there, <laughs> maybe you don't know, uh, you know, and, 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 and et cetera, you know, I, I could, I could expand on that. But one of the things, and this is something my wife taught me, and probably because she's learned from, from working with me on all the, the technology stuff I do. Anytime she says, you know, wives are great. Wives are great. Um, but anytime she's like, okay, so what time do you think you'll be done? Um, you know, we, we've all gone through this, right? As you, you communicate to your spouse, um, you're like, uh, like 10 o'clock should be like 10 o'clock at night. I, I should be done immediately double it in your mind. Like that's a rule she taught me. She goes like, okay, so you're thinking it's going to take two hours. So I'm going to expect you at midnight. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah. And, and, and so the reason that formula works, the reason that formula works is because there's stuff that happens or stuff that you think of when you're there that you just don't think of when you're not in the situation. Um, what I mean by that is you'll, you'll configure it and maybe, maybe you configure it and it works. And all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, I got to send out communication. 
Oh yeah, I've got to update our monitoring system. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's the oh yes. And then halfway through an oh yeah, you're like, oh no, you know, like I forgot that that if I do that, then that, that you know, all of a sudden the dominoes start to fall and you're like, oh man. And and that's when you find yourself, you know, kind of creating a new plan as you go. So so um, that's why I'm saying it's huge to to take some time before you just say, oh, we're we're gonna, you know. And, and by the way, the, the outage last night went phenomenal. Eric, if you're listening, great job, man. Uh, but, 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 um, but when you're planning, think through what is the smallest possible piece that I accomplish again, using that salary mindset rather than, um, rather than, than the hourly mindset to say, okay, then I'm going to schedule a huge amount of time to accomplish that small change. If we can get more done, great. But all we're targeting is, you know, for instance, I'll take last night, all we're targeting you got to see this. There, there's like, there's, I don't, I don't know if you can see this. There's like the, a line of small dogs that have all lined up to, to, to bark at me. Dogs. Um, so, so, um, so yeah. Okay. Number three. Um, if I can remember what I put in the description, I won't say verbatim, but use monitoring to become proactive. What I mean by that is first off, yeah, first off, Use a monitoring system. If, if you're not using a good monitoring system, and I mean something like, <laughs> I almost said SolarWinds. I can still say SolarWinds. It's a great product, right? Um, uh, PRTG, you know, uh, Zabbix, uh, you know, some of the open source stuff that's, that's, uh, that's out there. Um, if you're not using that, you're, I don't know how you live. You know, like, I don't know how you go to sleep at night. Maybe, maybe it's the ignorance is bliss mindset, but, but you need to have a monitoring system. So I'm just going to park that because that could be a whole discussion in itself. But second, the, the mindset, as I'm talking about managing your work time is to use your monitoring system to create game plans for yourself of if then scenarios. A lot of times, you know, when and I'm going back to, to the way I started this live stream, the place I got this idea is again, a guy on Reddit who's like, I love being a network engineer and a flurry of responses after this of like, just give it time. Don't worry. You'll hate your life. You know, like, like I'm like, what are these people doing? Like, like, it, but, but it makes sense. Like if you don't follow these three things and the th third one I'm about to tell you, I get it. Like, you're like, I just, I want to be done. I want to go, I want to go work at, you know, Work at a job that I can, that, that's an hourly job that I can just leave there making sandwiches. When I'm done making sandwiches, I go home and I get it. I've been there. I've been at a data center at two in the morning where everything went wrong. And I'm like, how do I, and the, you know, and that's when you start thinking crazy thoughts, you know, like maybe I should just be like a, a, a forest engineer you know, or something like you just start, you, logic is out the window. So, so what I'm trying to prevent is from you reaching that point. And so let me, let me get to that, that number three. Um, Use monitoring to play if-then games and proactive scenarios. Monitoring will help you ask the questions. Okay, first off, what do we monitor to make sure we know when something goes down? I want to know when that site goes offline. For, for instance, one of the ways that we design our sites is always with failover. Um, so, so we will, you know, we have the primary connection, fiber optic internet. And if that fails, it'll jump over to, uh, we'll call it a, a lower grade, a, a coax a cable, like a cable modem or a DSL. Like, but, but it's there. It's something. At least if, if the fiber goes offline, there's, there's a backup. A lot of people use cellular. You know, and this is where the SD-WAN discussion comes in, you know, blending all of these things together. Um, so, and, and this is, we were just having the discussion, gosh, yesterday. The, the, it's funny. There's, you will see as you, as you employ these three strategies, you will see it just relive again and again. Yeah, like just yesterday, we were having a conversation. We're like, okay, how do we know if our site goes offline? You know, how do we, how can we, how can we set up monitoring to know if the fiber is off and it switches over to this? And it, it was, it was an easy discussion. We're like, oh, well, you know, ping that IP address, you know, okay, that goes down. Okay, now here's, here's the next question. What do we do if that happens? This is where I land my point number three. Ask the question. It's going to take some time. What do we do? You know, it's, it's great. You, you know where I'm going with this, right? It's great to know if something goes down. And, and this is where a lot of network engineers, the guys that are posting on Reddit and being like, I hate my life, you know, 
are the ones that have monitoring, but they never came up with a game plan. So, so it's you know, 10 at night. I, and tell me you know, you know what I'm talking about. It's 10 at night. Your phone goes, bing. You're like. <laughs> so, so the first off is like, do I even turn over and pick up my phone, right? A lot of us are there where you're like, I don't even want to know. Like, I, and all of a sudden it's like, bing. And I'm like, bing, 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 bing. And you're like, like, and, and so, so you know what I'm talking about where you're like, okay, number one, I'm going to pick up my phone. And then number two, as you look at the phone, your stomach drops and you're like, okay, we just lost blah. Uh, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Mr. Labman. Why me? <laughs> what, what? Because you signed up for this. So here's, here's the, here's the thing. The, the, the question that you have to you so so I'm, I'm painting the picture you know the scenario right the question that should have been asked is what do we do when it's 10 o'clock at night and all of this goes red right if it's just you if you're the one-man show at the company that's a discussion where you're like let me lay this out and make my management team fully aware of the drawback of having a, a you know a one-man show you know what I mean? Like you're, you're not there to convince them to, to, um, uh, uh, you know, hire somebody else, but maybe that's a discussion of like, Hey guys, I'm one man or woman, forgive me. Um, and, and so, so, uh, so many distractions, but I checked my stats on my YouTube channel, which I think, I think it's up to like 33,000 subscribers. Right. I looked at the stats, uh, about a week ago. Guess, guess what percentage of men versus women come to my site? Um, I, you, you won't be able to guess. So 99.3% male come to my YouTube channel. 0.7, 0 0.7. And it's, it's starting to make me ask the question. I'm like going to my wife. I'm like, do you love me? Like, like is it me? Like, or is it, is it network engineering is so male dominated? Uh, but, but, but nonetheless, so, so. Um, what was I talking about? So, so this is where you can have conversations with um, your management team and say, hey, maybe we need to bring in an MSP, you know, not, not to replace me, but to compliment me, you know, to where, you know, they have a team of, a team of people that are available, you know, 24 seven, they have a hundred people on staff, you know, that, that, uh, you know, that, that they, they can use. So when it's 10 o'clock at night and I hear, bing, 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 or maybe I don't because I'm asleep, you know, they can jump in and take over and begin triaging and, and doing things. So, so the challenge that we often find ourselves in, and this is where I'm going to come back to that point number three. And then I'm just going to open, I've, I'm, I've, I've got about maybe seven minutes left of my walk. So then I'm just going to take as many questions as I can see on my little screen as I'm walking right here. Um, oftentimes we stop at monitoring and we say, okay, I can see when something goes down. And that's great. That's great. Huge, huge step forward in your in your technology um, survival techniques, right? Whoa. Um, the next question is, what do I do if that happens? And it's not like, well, oh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I'd like whether we intentionally say that or we or we unintentionally say that. A lot of us do if we don't have a path. It's it's like we'll we'll wait to see what happens. <laughs> I was just just last night. I was talking to my wife. Uh, we were, we were talking about, um, this guy that we were having a conversation with long story. And she said, he said he would call back and I go, what if he does? And, and she goes, he won't, it's too late. I, I think he'll, he won't. I said, well, what if he does? Are you going to answer the phone? Are you going to, are you going to, you know, are you going to ignore it? What are you going to do? And she was like, I don't know. And I was like, you know, well, you better answer that. Cause when the phone rings, right. I know this sounds totally unrelated, but it's so not related. You know, it's, it's so related. Like, we don't want to answer the question because we're like, that's a stressful thought. And sure enough, you know, three minutes afterwards, the phone rang and I looked at her and she goes, I never said what I was going to do. And I was like, what are you going to do? I was like, you've got exactly five seconds before it goes to voicemail. What are you going to do? You know, that's, that's what I'm saying is in our network engineer, in our monitoring world, we stop at detecting down it, you know, down to, you, you get where I'm at, right? If you don't ask, what am I going to do? and have an answer, maybe even document it, then that's, that's where the stress just, whoosh, and, and a lot of people just learn to live there. And that's, that's where, that's where you have people posting on Reddit's 
that network engineering is the most miserable career. Uh, and just wait, just wait, they say. It is so not. It is so. If, if, if I could convey, if you do these three things and, 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 and live by them, this can be the most amazing career ever. It's, it's like, what's going to happen next? Like, it's, it's, it's such, a, such a gratifying career. So that said, um, I've got about, I'm walking slow. Uh, I've got about seven minutes or so until I until I'm uh, heading heading home. So, ask questions. If if you came for just those three things, that's it. So you can you can stop right there. Ask questions. Uh, what 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 are things? And let me. I can. I, so the only way, by the way, if you've never streamed live on your phone, the only way I know is to literally <laughs> scroll back, um, scroll back with it. So so while I'm waiting for questions to come in, uh, I'll uh, I'll just look at what's already been said. Um, Collection history from monitoring. That way you can look for trends. Yes. Yes, Gerald. Thank you for that, that, uh, that pointer. Um, reviewing your log files. That's smart. You know what I mean? Like you come in in the morning, everything's green. Hey, let's look at the logs. What happened last night? You know? Oh my gosh, we had an outage of an hour at one to 2 AM. Maybe it didn't affect the customer, but that, wh why did that happen? You know, totally hundred percent agree. Um, pro tip include, uh, says Brenton, uh, include out of band management with wireless access like cradle point helps reach equipment when there's no power but internet access. Yes, yes, yes. Um, cradle point routers, uh, FYI, bailed us out in so many circumstances. So, so you can get them. I mean, they're 400, 500 bucks, not, not, not crazy for, for a decent one, you know, one that does a one gigabit per second, but what a cradle point router, they're, they're made, they do many things, but the way they made their names is cellular connectivity. So quick story on that. Um, I don't know if you know this, but businesses don't often think about technology when they're building a building. <laughs> and, uh, they don't think, oh, this great piece of land that we found out here in the middle of the desert uh, that we got really cheap is a great place for a building. Wait, wait, hang on. Is there internet here? Like, like they don't think of that until they've signed leases and things like that. So, so long story short, cradle point routers bring in a cellular based internet connection I guess you could use it permanently, but, but you're going to pay a ton, um, more so for a fill the gap, you know, while you're waiting for construction to happen. Um, uh, that, so to get the, get the point, yes. Uh, cradle point also a great backup. Um, so infosec Pat, what MSP programs do you use at your company? That would be, it's a great idea for a, a, a live stream in itself. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Um, so key programs that, uh, that we use, uh, I'll just rattle it off. PRTG, obviously, that's that's uh, one of my favorite, uh, just because it's pure network monitoring. Cat Tools um, was acquired by SolarWinds a long time ago. Backup configuration. Uh, Netbox created a whole training series on that one product for documenting IP addresses. So, so right now I'm thinking of the network. Um, let me go beyond that. Um, uh, Kaseya, uh, monitoring endpoints, servers, management, patching, antivirus. Datto, Autotask, uh, ticketing systems, uh, things like that. Uh, oh, time tracking, uh, time tracking, huge, huge piece of data slash auto task. Um, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. I, there's, I mean, we use gobs, uh, gobs and gobs and gobs of software, but that's, that's the stuff that I, uh, slam into every single day. Um, so uh, good. Thanks, Pat. Uh, for others, uh, for starters, Marcus is saying, buy Cisco equipment. Uh, yes, it, actually, that on my last my last live stream, I talked about that. Uh, there's a price you pay, uh, and I'm not, I'm not gonna just say Cisco's the only way because they're not. There's a lot of solutions out there, but there is a price you pay, and you pay it. You pay it. Uh, not not the company. Companies like you know after the the, the five seconds of wow, you saved us two thousand dollars wears off. And the site is down. They don't remember that, you know. They're it's they're like, what have you done? So so yeah, there is a price that you pay. Um, so yeah, that was a big conversation on the last live stream. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, do you have any material advice for starting a career as a trainer slash teacher? Man, you guys are giving me all kinds of great live stream ideas. So where do I get these ideas as I'm walking? You, um, you know, thinking about the, these conversations. So so um. So Jeremiah, yeah, I have a lot of tips and, and actually, uh, yeah, 
I'm in the middle of building something new with uh, uh, somebody you guys probably know, uh, Network Chuck, David Bumble. Uh, that will answer a lot of those questions and actually open the door to what I think is a lot of opportunities. Um, so goals for 2021. Uh, that actually was a live stream I did about a month ago uh, before 2021 hit. Honestly, when it comes to goals for 2021 and, and goal, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a tangible goal guy naturally. I should be. I'm more of a direction setter. Like, okay. I, I know exactly where I want to head that way. Um, let's head that way. Uh, and, and, and weakness when someone's like, so what are you going to deliver by the end of what I'm like, I don't know. You know, I could make something up, um, but often, often I'm, I'm content to sit at like, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm heading that, that direction. So, uh, so, uh, uh, geo, geo, uh, Campos, I will tell you once I get a little further down the direction, cause I'm telling you, I think the chaos of 2020 is not over. I think that uh, 2021 will give us more than we ever thought uh, could happen. Um, and so I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, I think that that uh, 2021 will be, you know, the plans that we make uh, may be, uh, maybe 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 um, set in a different direction by by some of the events that could happen. So. I'm, I'm, uh, I'll leave it out. I'm, I'm not going off the conspiracy theory bandwagon or anything like that. I'm just saying I have a feeling a lot of what 2020 started uh, will continue this year and um, fan out bigger. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Ah, scrolling back. Uh, I'm thinking of getting unified DM device. Thanks to you. Good. Good. Pat. Appreciate that. I just, uh, just scroll back and saw that. Um, can you make a video of how network engineer can be a wonderful job, uh, Geo? Good idea. Um, maybe, yeah. Um, so, uh, Paddy Star, uh, forgive my my horrific pronunciation. Do you use automation at Via for your configurations, management, or troubleshooting? And if yes, what tool do you use and how? Um, do we use automation at Via? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure uh we used to um like so 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 this actually uh, so many good ideas i always tell people that so here's here's the problem here's here's a big problem we are so automate automation centric uh today that we often forget the fact that we have to know how to do it the right way before we automate it um, so, so I've got three steps to how we build every service at VM. One, know how to do it manually. If you don't know how to do it manually the same way every single time, then you can't automate it. And that's, that's the problem is we're, I mean, it's not a problem. It's great. We're, we're creative, right? A lot of network engineers are creative. They're like, well, wait, you know, I can, I can, for instance, I could set up an automated script that changes all these OSPF areas, what we did last night, changes all these OSPF areas to stub areas. That's awesome. Um, not realizing, oh yeah, okay, if I, if, I, if I even figure out that script, number one, that means every single router has to be exactly the same. And, you know, sometimes through the growth of an MSP, as, as much as I would love to say every single router we have is template. You guys, I, I'm being real with you guys here. You know, it's, it's not... It's not, um, it's not that easy, you know? And a lot of times when you're like, okay, we got to standardize all of our subnets. <laughs> uh, yeah, good luck with that. If you're like, like in our heads, we're like, yeah, we just changed the subnet. You know, instead of using, you know, 192.168.5 at that site, we're going to use, you know, 10. Dot, and then you start saying, oh, the printers, they're all statically assigned. Oh, ah, the thermostat. Oh, oh, oh you know, like, and so, so you're like, okay, the, 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 the reward versus, you know, doing it is, is too much. So, so I'm coming back to the automation. So, so a lot of times when you think about automating, it's a great, you know, if, if you're starting something new, great. You automate it from the beginning, right? But, but a lot of times, so anyway, my three steps. One, know how to manually do it and make sure that manual thing works every single time. Two, then automate that manual thing. Once you're doing it again and again and again to the point where you're ad nauseum, you're like, I'm not going to do this VLAN deployment again. Then automate it and maybe start with something simple. A friend of mine, uh, Ben Freitag, if you're, if you're out there, great guy, you know, super, uh, I think double CCIE. Um, 
I think he's going for more. Um, Ben, sorry if I shouldn't have used your name. Uh, but but uh, he created an Excel spreadsheet. He did so many campus VLAN deployments that he just he created an Excel spreadsheet that for a catalyst, I think it was a 6500 series platform. Um, he goes in, he fills out the spreadsheet of how many students, how many classrooms, and it literally poof, spits out a, a full VLAN configuration. I'm like, okay, that's a great, is, is it Python? Is it is it like, I just plug it in again? No, it's not. And this is why we've been talking about automation for 20 some years and we're still like, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, that's why I love Ubiquity. Uh, you know, Ubiquity, bless their hearts for all their flaws. That's their, their idea is let's automate everything from the beginning where it's just plug and play. But they're running into the same challenge that every other vendor has is they're like, yeah, let's just automate that. Well, okay, you plug and play it and you've automated it so much that you just can't do something without getting into XML code behind the scenes. And somebody's like, I just want to add a VPN. It's like, oh, sorry, our automation system doesn't support that. So step one, know how to do it manually. Step two, automate it. Step three, if you can do that, now you move it to customer self-service to where once you've automated it enough, now you glue on a little web page front end and say, hey, customer, if you ever suspect that you're having internet connectivity, this is just off the top of my head, challenges at your site, double click this icon on your desktop and push that button, which automatically reboots the cable modem, automatically power cycles the routers, the switches, the WAPs, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm making something up. Obviously, that'd be a big button to push. But um, somebody asked, do you do network automation? Yes, we do. But it's actually way more limited than what we used to do because we would automate errors. Um, we, would, we would be so fast to move into to automation that we would, we would figure out a great way to click a button and automate a flurry of errors that we just ended up cleaning up. Uh, and it took way more time to do that than, uh, than if we would have just done it manually to start off with. So that, you guys are coming up with some great topics for, uh, for future walks. Uh, so that said, I'm back, I'm home. Time to start the day. Uh, time to start recording uh, some Security Plus content. Uh, that's that's what I'm working on right now, and uh, and uh, and a whole bunch of other things. So uh, uh, appreciate you guys. Talk soon. See you later.